Hey, what's up, guys? Chris here from McDonald Online. I'm here in Anaheim, California with my good friend, Chris Graham. Hey, guys. He's a mastering engineer and a very cool friend, and he's going to share with us some very cool tips on mastering today. What are you going to talk about today, uh, Chris? Uh, I'm going to talk about, for those of you that are mastering your own mixes, five tips on how to get great sounding masters at home. Hey guys, Chris Graham here. Uh, I've been a mastering engineer for about full time for about 10 years or so, and I've got some tips that can help you guys master your own mixes um, and get a better quality result from your home studios. Um, so I got five tips. Here's the first one. First and foremost, and this is super important, is having a reference playlist. Uh, when you're checking your masters and you're checking your mixes even to make sure they sound good, the most important thing you need to do is compare your songs to other songs. And the best way to do that is whether you use Spotify or Tidal or Apple Music or whatever you happen to use, is take 10 songs that have shaped your life. So your 10 favorite songs that you've listened to in a thousand different places and a thousand different sets of speakers and make a playlist. When I do this, my, my master playlist, I use Tidal because it's lossless, I like it, um, is called hashtag one ref. And that way that hashtag in the playlist name puts it first in my list of playlists in whatever app I'm happen to be listening in. And I've got 10 songs in there that have really just defined me um, and defined my life in music. So whenever I'm listening to a new set of speakers, whenever I'm mixing a song, all I gotta do is pull that playlist out and it's instant sanity. I can listen to it and I know what the speakers sound like that I'm listening to because I know what those songs are supposed to sound like. So that's my first tip. Second tip is if you're mastering your own mixes, this is a time when it's really easy to start to feel unsure of yourself, to start to have this idea that, oh, does this sound good? Am I a real human? Which way's up? Ah! Like this sort of losing your mind when you're starting to master your own mixes, is, it's really kind of common. So one of the best ways that you can combat this is to have what I like to call a mastering contest. Now a mastering contest, you can use professional mastering engineers like myself or anybody else, um, or you can use normal audio engineers, or you can use just friends of yours that are also hobbyists. And what I like to recommend is take one of your songs, bounce it down, try to avoid doing you know, too much or even any mastering com uh, compression in your mix, and send that same song to a few people. And most mastering engineers, especially affordable ones, will give you a free mastering sample. Um, and that is a great way to get a couple different masters back from your friends, from someone you respect, from a buddy, from another mastering engineer, from other audio engineers, and then compare the results. And the reason this is a good thing is that when you're mastering your own mixes, it can be really easy to lose perspective. And when you have other masters that other people have done, worst case scenario, it confirms that you did a good job. Best case scenario, you hear what other mastering engineers have done and it's this light bulb moment of like, oh wow, I didn't even know my mixes could sound that good. So that's a really great methodology on that second tip to make sure that your masters are as good as they possibly could be. Um, you can check out my website if you want to, chrisgrammastering.com. There's a free sample upload there. More than happy to do a sample of one song for you. Um, but I'm obviously not the only guy that does that. That's a pretty common service. And it's pretty easy to find people that are willing to do that. Next tip um, is checking for what I like to call mix portability. So when you're recording music, when you're mixing music, when you're mastering music, it's really easy to get into a live sound mindset. And that live sound mindset is, I wanna make sure this song sounds as good as it possibly can in the speakers I'm using or in the headphones I'm using. When the point of mastering a song is to get it to sound good everywhere. You want everyone who listens to your song to think, wow, this sounds amazing in my iPod uh, headphones or in my really fancy headphones or on my home theater or on my TV or in my car. The best way to get a master that sounds great everywhere is to check the master everywhere. And this works really well for mixing as well. So the easiest way to do that is to mix and master on a laptop. You can take that laptop and you can get a little adapter cable and you can go sit in your car where you probably have more listening experience than you do in your studio and you can check your work and make adjustments there. Same thing for your home theater system. If you watch a lot of TV or concerts or whatever, you can sit down and you can plug your laptop into your home theater system and you know how that home theater system sounds because you also know how that home theater system sounds with your reference playlist, that first tip I gave you guys. So if you don't have a laptop or if you do have one that you haven't installed your recording software on, Cubase is what I hear is popular these days. 
If, if you do that, that makes it really easy to make these adjustments and to make sure everything sounds portable. You might find that the master sounds a little too bassy in the car and sounds a little too thin in your home theater system and you have to kind of equal that out so that it sounds everywhere. So this mixed portability is really the goal and getting stuck in that live sound mindset of I'm just trying to make it sound good in one spot is the source of a lot of heartbreak for people that are mastering their own songs. And my fourth tip for you guys is that when you're checking your masters, and this works for mixes as well, is I recommend checking them at conversational level. What that means is when you're in your car, you should be able to have a conversation while listening to that music. Because here's the thing, most people listen to music at conversational level. Most people that are mastering their own music listen at the loudest the amp can possibly go. They're trying to hear every little detail. And the problem with that is that our ears respond differently, much differently at loud volumes than they do at quiet volumes. What complicates that is many sound systems totally change the EQ of the song as you begin to turn it up as well. So listening at conversational volumes and making sure your song sounds good when you could have a conversation with somebody in the car can really help a lot. Because the most important thing when you are referencing uh, the volume level of your masters is understanding that your mixes, if they sound good quiet, will probably also sound good loud. If they sound good loud, they will not necessarily sound good quiet. So uh, my last tip for you guys is with limiters. So obviously if you've done any mastering at all, if you know anything about mastering, you've watched any other Chris's videos on mastering, a limiter is virtually always the last plug-in that you put in your chain. So you know you might do compressor, multi-band compressor, yada yada yada, limiter. Limiter is the last thing that you do. What most people do that they don't know is a bad idea is they set the output ceiling of the limiter to zero dB. And what that means is that the loudest parts of the song are going to peak at zero dB. You shouldn't do that. You should have it lower than that. Apple recommends you should have it at like negative two or negative three. And the reason for that is that while the master might sound great in your studio, it might sound great when you bounce down to a wave. When you convert to MP3 or AAC or MP4 or whatever it happens to be, or it's streamed on Spotify or anything else, when it's converted to a lossy format, when it's close, when it's peaking at zero, it re-renders the MP3 above zero and you actually get clipping after it's been converted. This is called inner sample clipping and it does not sound good. There's a lot of different things, there's a lot of different advice that you can get and you can hear about mastering that is, uh, it's not one size fits all. Avoiding inner sample clipping is a one size fits all. It's a good move. So leave yourself a little bit of headroom so that when you get converted to MP3 that you're not going to, or MP4 or whatever, that you're not going to get that inner sample clipping. So my five tips one more time are one, have a reference playlist. That is, it's, this is your sanity tool and the most important tool you have when mastering your own songs. It's not your limiter, it's not your plugins, it's not your speakers, it's not your headphones, it's your sanity. It's making the right decision instead of starting to freak out at the very end and then over processing and over EQing. Uh, number two is have a mastering contest. Take one song, send it to a few different people, get them to master it for you, just like a free sample, and then compare it to your own work. Uh, number three is check for portability. Make sure that your masters sound good everywhere. A good master sounds good everywhere. A bad master only will sound good in your studio. Uh, number four, check your masters at a reference volume level of about conversational. You're trying to listen to them at the same volume that your listeners will listen to, and most of your listeners aren't gonna to listen to your music as loud as you do. Uh, number five, this is the last kind of technical nerd tip here, is don't set your output ceiling at zero. Set it a little below zero so that you don't get inner sample clipping when it goes to streaming, when it gets converted to a lower quality format. Thank you, Chris, that was awesome. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, leave everything down below. Chris is gonna check once in a while to answer your questions. Also check his YouTube channel, Chris Grand Mastering, here on YouTube. I'm gonna leave the link on top. Go and like his channel, okay? Chris has some very cool mixing tips on his channel and also mastering stuff going on. So um, again, uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. All right, guys, I'm gonna see you next time. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris.